All right. So uh, Tiana Tallinn says considerations for elevated morning blood glucose readings, mid nineties. Um, I think usually your morning glucose is primarily impacted by your hormones and very rarely impacted by what you ate the night before, unless you are severely glucose intolerant. So the overwhelming probability is that if your blood glucose is elevated in the morning and mid nineties is, you know, not tremendously high, but there's certainly a lot of people who would want it lower than that, but that's, you know, probably cortisol. Um, so if there are other signs of slipping t- into prediabetes, then I might come up with another explanation, but I don't think waking up in the morning and often having mid-90s glucose with everything else being fine is likely to be a sign other than, than cortisol levels. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing because you're supposed to have a cortisol spike in the morning. You might want to look at your cortisol levels over time. The, uh, the Dutch test can look at that. It happens to look at a lot of other things that I think are useful, so that might be my first go-to. There are certainly other tests uh, that just look at cortisol over the time course of the day that you can use. Um, what to do about it? Well, I mean, you, you first want to know if that's actually the, the issue. Um, if it's out of range, then you probably want to look at stress reduction as a first step there's some evidence for using phosphatidylserine to lower cortisol. Usually people use that at night for sleep, um, but I would certainly look at stress management as the first step. Uh, but I wouldn't necessarily be um, I wouldn't necessarily be freaked out about that. All right, thanks, Tiana. Um, Anonymous says, "Do you have any thoughts on detoxing heavy metals?" Yeah, I did a video about this, and my thought is look at how bad the heavy metal is. And if it's, if it's at the level where a conventional practitioner would say you have lead toxicity, for example, then you need a fairly extreme solution of that, that I don't feel comfortable advising anyone on. But if it's like your levels are a little bit high and you want to reduce them, then my suggestion would be zinc supplementation on the basis that most heavy metals produce a metallothionine increase. Metallothionine is your endogenous chelator. And the ability of a heavy metal to provoke that that protective response is completely dependent on zinc concentrations inside your cell, even across the range of deficiency through normal status through, through more zinc than you need. And there's no evidence for a threshold or cutoff so I think if your zinc status is fine and you boost your zinc status a little, a little bit better without hurt, without uh, causing any zinc toxicity, then, or without causing copper deficiency or deficiencies of other minerals, I think that's a very gentle and safe way to reduce your load of heavy metals. Unless what you're seeing is arsenic, in which case methylation would be my focus because methylation plays a specific role in addressing arsenic. And for anyone who hasn't seen it, I have a comprehensive methylation resource at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash methylation. So those would be my ideas for gentle nutritional approaches. 